Action! Disgust me. Grow up. Well, hello everybody, this is Craig from Watch the Script Movie Podcast. Uh, this is just a little short review of my recent cinematic experience um, where I went the other night to see a 40-year-old classic which was Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the director's cut. So that was out in 1982. 1982, I was four years old. And it's taken me 40 years to get to see what I believe is a classic on the big screen. And um, I just thought I'd give you a wee update on how my experience was going to see an older film in a newer environment, thing like that. So on behalf of Chris and myself, before I start, I'd just like to thank everybody for the likes, the shares, uh, the comments and the support for What's the Script that we've been having. We fully appreciate everyone is. Thank you very, very much. We are small, but little acorns, little acorns, that's the saying. <laughs> we love what we're doing, and it's just for a laugh. Um, Chris and I both work the same job in different areas, um, but we, we stay very far apart, so it's hard to get to see a film together at the cinema, which is why he couldn't come with me the other night. And we work mad hours, and I've got three kids as well, so uh, time is short, as they say. So my cinematic experience usually is me going myself. Um, my wife and my older daughter, they go together. Um, when they're at the cinema, I've got my two twin boys that are only three years old, and vice versa. So I don't even get to enjoy cinematic blockbusters with my nearest and dearest. I'm usually there myself. Um, a 44-year-old guy with a salt-and-pepper white beard sitting in the dark. But I'm okay. I'm approachable. I won't, I won't do nothing. I won't touch you, <laughs> as they say. But um, this was new for me. Back in the day, um, I went to see the original Star Wars trilogy, which was shown for a limited amount of time, maybe coming up for 20 years ago now, um, at the time of, you know, like Revenge of the Sith and... Uh, Attack of the Clones and stuff, they, they started to put the original three out for a limited amount of time. And I went to see that and it was great and stuff, but I went with friends and it was totally different. This time around, um, I usually go to the Glasgow Lux, um, which is great. I have a monthly pass card, which is about fourteen ninety nine a month. And if you see two films a month, then it's totally paid for itself. I mean, every chair, every chair, every chair is a recliner, comfortable. Audible and visual experience is uh, second to none. Um, but with Rath I Can, I noticed it was an older film on the big screen. I don't know if this film has been digitally remastered or put in 4K. I've not done my research, to be honest with you. But it was fine. It was perfectly watchable. It was just noticeably not as crisp as the films we're seeing today. And that's probably, you know, rightly so. But uh, anybody that's not seen The Wrath I Can, it's the second instalment of the original uh, Star Trek cast and crew. <clears throat> um, and it's what, set in the 23rd century, where by this time, Captain James Kirk is now an admiral. And he's feeling his age. He's out of sync with, with Starfleet because he's in a more trainee, ambassadorial role. And he's not as active as he used to be as James Kirk. Um, but it gets to go into the, the Enterprise for a, a training run to evaluate it and see all the old crew. So we've got everybody there, you know, we've got uh, Spock, we've got McCoy, Scotty, Chekhov, Ahura. And we've also got a cinematic debut for a young Kirsty Alley. And this was her first uh, movie role. And I think she was great. Really good. Always did like Kirsty Alley growing up. To be fair, she was uh, a bit of a looker. I must say, uh, especially in Cheers as well, and I was kind of shocked when I looked her up and she's 71. Oh, 
Mercy. So, great film. As I say, we have William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeFrost Kelly, James Doonan, Walter Cooning, George Takai, uh, in the late in the show, Nichols as well. Obviously, James Doonan has passed away, DeFrost Kelly as well, and others. Um, but we also have Ricardo Montalban. Montalban. How do you say his name? He is Khan. James T. Kirk, my old friend. That's him. So he plays a great part and he's the absolute nemesis for Kirk, who abandoned him and his crew to a planet 15 years previous, but it turns out that Khan is like 300 years old, man. He's a 20th century tyrant. But, spoiler alert, it all goes good in the end, apart from one thing, which is Spock. But the next film was obviously called The Search for Spock, which is about Spock playing hide-and-seek. He's an absolute Vulcan champion. So, Search for Spock, the hide-and-seek years. <laughs> Only kidding. Yeah, it's about Project Genesis. Spock died, fired to the planet, Genesis rejuvenates him, and that's Star Trek Three. But um, I wanted to say about this experience, I'll get back on, on cue here. In Scotland, we aren't really used to having this kind of opportunity whereupon you get to see the old classics in the present day form. Um, not as prevalent as I noticed, obviously, in North America, where you get to see a lot of the old classics a lot of the time. Um, in Scotland, it's more or less maybe an anniversary here or there in certain theatres that are kind of only for a day or two, which isn't great. Um, this month at the, the Odeon we've got Star Trek 2. We have E.T., which I'm not going to be able to see because of work commitments. It's only on for a couple of days and I'm absolutely gutted about that. I would have loved to have seen E.T. Um, and Jaws. I'm going to see Jaws next week. So really looking forward to that. Um, but as I say, in Scotland, it's it's few and far between. We don't have, we've never really had the, the drive through experience as well. Um, we've had it sometimes, not so in the last 10 years or so, for a couple of days at Christmas down by Loch Lomond, where they show Elf or Miracle on 34th Street, stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? But this this was good. The, the theatre was kind of full, it was packed. Uh, the one kind of problematic cinema goer that was there was sitting the chair next to the one next to me so two chairs along and I can only say that this lady obviously should have been accompanied by someone because she sat down and started arguing with somebody that wasn't there started looking at me laughing calling me a sex offender just a maniac do you know that way if you ever go on a bus and you're the only person on the bus and an idiot comes on and they'll sit right next to you? That's my luck. That's, I get that all the time. I really do. But I had to say to her, I says, look, you're going to have to be quiet. That is a trailer's finishing. I want to watch this. And to put you in the picture, I had just finished a 12-hour shift at my work and went straight to the, the theatre, straight to the cinema. And I'd been up from half past five that morning. So I'd been on the go for about 14 hours, 13 hours. And this maniac just started and she would not let up. But 45 minutes later, she got up to go to the toilet, came back, went away in the middle of the auditorium and sat beside these other poor souls in the one other empty chair that I could see in the dark. So, hurrah, I get rid of her. Now, as I said, the film wasn't as crisp or precise as, as we're getting used to just now and that's fair enough uh, effects wise especially for a sci-fi kind of movie you're thinking this is going to be a bit, do you know what I mean, it's not going to be great to watch but it was, it stood up absolutely brilliant the only things that were noticeable were the things that were noticeable on television or on video where it's big shots of the Enterprise leaving the hangar dock and the wee person that's outside in the spacesuit waving, that was just noticeable, but everything gets a pass for me because it's very easy to watch an old film now and grade it by today's standards, which weren't available at the time. 
So I think it was ILM that done a lot of the work for this as well, and it's, it was obviously great. You've seen the, the panning shots underneath the hull and, and stuff like that as well. And then, of course, you had William Shatner. His dialogue was just... <laughs> it was great to see his face, do you know what I mean, 40 foot high. Well, you know, it's great to be back here on the Enterprise. I don't do a good William Shatner. It was it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so I'm going to look forward to going to see Jaws because, as we all know, the shark in Jaws in certain bits was not tremendous uh, to watch on a, a small screen. So on a big screen, um, it's going to be very interesting. But it's a classic. I mean, Jaws was out before I was born. I'm going to really look forward to seeing that. As much as I'm not a fan of... Oh, Richard Dreyfus. I think he's a very quirky actor and he's a bit marmite, and he? You'd love him or hate him, but he's no my favourite at all. He gets past Marks and Stand By Me because he's generally just narrating and that, you know what I mean? So that's quite good. But the film, I would urge anybody that's got the opportunity, especially in Scotland, because it's no readily available to get to Get your movie theatres and see an old an old classic if you can. Um, I hope to see more of it. I hope to see it more prevalent and more regular because I think obviously after COVID, the cinematic world took a bit of a bump. Things get put in hold, things get cancelled. Um, and obviously if you're a DC fan like I am, it's getting more and more frustrating with every announcement being a cancellation or something getting put back again and again and again. And Henry Cavill not coming out to tell us if he wants to be Superman or no. Because we need Superman. DC is Superman. Don't care what MD says. DC without Superman is strawberries without cream, you know what I mean? But that was all it was. I had a great time. I was quite tired on the night, obviously, having just worked. But it's something I want to see more of in Scotland. Is it something that you get quite regularly? Have you seen a lot of old classic films? Um let us know, let us know your experience. In today's environment, the, the Odin looks is, is perfect, it's beautiful, it's clean, it's comfortable, it's spacious, um, and it's better than sitting in your room watching an old grainy DVD or or something like that, or a television programme with adverts in it, which is happening on s- streaming services a lot now as well, unless you want to pay another three pounds a, a month just not to have advertisements which is mental but it was always going to happen so once again um thanks very much this is just kind of just me bumping my gums for a wee bit do you know that way yeah because oh, i'm not the biggest trekkie i do like star trek but i'm i'm all about the star wars same as chris but hopefully we're going to get to get to see a couple of films together in the future, it's just very hard. We stay far apart. I drive, he doesn't. I've got kids, he doesn't. Um, and he's a lazy bastard, and he won't get the bus, you know what I mean? So there you go, Chris, that's a shout out to you, pal. But we are thoroughly enjoying the support, the love, and doing this little experiment podcast of ours. Just a way of two guys getting on and, and just talking about stuff that I love, which is movies. And there's a lot of these out there, especially on Twitter. So thanks very much everybody for giving us our shares and, and our likes because it keeps us going, it really does and we'll try and get more comedy content into it. Our next one is going to be an absolute belter, it's going to be The Hangover and I'm, I'm struggling to see how we're going to try and keep it short, I really am because there's so many, so many jokes, so many funny scenes, so many great performances. Oh, there's a fucking tiger in it, you know what I mean? It's Mike Tyson's in it. It's going to be great. Absolutely brilliant. So thanks again. This has been Big Craig for What's the Script? Just giving you a little shot on the Rafa can. Go and see it.